first poem I ever wrote was about San Francisco and the homeless and what I was told. My mom has it framed in her bathroom. I was 12 years old and I rhymed poor white bro with chips from Nabisco, given to a beggar as he pushed his cart down the road. That boy got buried at Hayton Ashbury beneath the Ben and Jerry's and a big city and a pretty girl is the only thing that he needs to get his heart to beating again. Well, this all used to be for nothing and no one and now I shout transparency, but I miss every single one of my secrets. I would rather no pain than be numb, but then again, we ask for the opiates to numb the pain for us. Well, I always fall asleep to dream of mending up my wounds and wait to spend the day reliving every bruise for the sake of a sad song or a sweet repose or watching the blood flow from the stitching like it were a cavalry of demons in retreat promising to leave me alone. They're liars! The release has never been as satisfying as the promise to fix what's been sown. We get bottled up like the alcohol gets bottled up and then we bottle it up in us. And I search for ways to define myself by some skeptical lack of trust because if I can't trust in anything, I'm not to blame for my lack of movement. And I can abuse you and all of your pity and I can convolute it. My sister used to sing when she was younger, but the world had got at her throat. And she put that dream away while coming of age acted as a serpent and questioned her home. When I was younger, I wanted to be a cowboy. And then I wanted to be Superman. And in kindergarten, I jumped off of a chair and told everyone I could fly. And then I wanted to wear my fake green snakeskin cowboy boots over my red... Blue sweatpants, red inside out, underwear, iron on, Superman, bath towel, cape, costume, and be cow man. <laughs> well, I am a cow man, said all of my fantasies about my wife to be were based upon things I should have never seen. And our fantasies about our wives to be are based on positions that should have never been idolized by our eyes. Worshipped as though they gave us life, but that's the nature of the beast. And he still squirms next to wisdom as she screams, clawing for me on the streets. And how does life begin as a seed that turns out to scream for something? Like someone misnamed gift for to be inherently found wanting. If there is so much joy to be had, then tell me where I went wrong, because for all the time I tried to satisfy my mom. I still cannot write one single joyful song. So, mom, I tried. And come October, I thought that I could do it. But November threw us into a whirlwind again. And come January, I knew it. All the things that I told my fans about the hope that I had found are lying in a hotel bathroom in a puddle of blood on the ground. And somebody will love that because it's honest! And somebody will hate it because it's crude! And as for me, every time I stand and give my testimony before a crowd, I will lie awake at night and wonder about whether or not I told the truth. God forgive me. I believe a lot of lies that come from the mouths of a lot of good liars, namely me. But I'd rather tie a millstone around my neck and throw myself into the sea than perpetuate some emotionally driven blasphemy that you don't care for the suffering. Suffering servant, give your children eyes to see the wonders that you have for them and ears to hear the direction for their wandering, wandering feet. Grieve with me! Will you grieve with me? Look at the cross, the promise we receive. I will grieve with you with groanings too deep for words. I will sympathize with the temptation to believe the lies that you have heard. I will mourn over the loss of finite family and friends. And I will defeat death so that you will know that death is not the end. At the cross of Christ I know that the bonds of sin are broken. That they bar the gates of hell for me. And that heaven's doors are open as wide as my sweet Savior's arms were stretched out when he died. And love has defeated death with a life for me to hope in.
At the cross of Christ, I know that despair has been removed. That it drowns beneath the crushing weight of hope is found in you as blood spills and puddles to cover every self-inflicted bruise. My God becomes salvation, the resurrected truth. At the cross of Christ, I know that anger has found its vengeance. That righteousness became sin for me. And that only at the remembrance of a man acquainted with sorrows do I stand forgiven of my resentment as wrath and justice turn aside to crucify my defendant at the cross of Christ I know that shame has lost its place that Jesus Christ endured the curse and scorned all the disgrace and atoned before the throne his death fled without a trace that I might enter in and look full on his wonderful beautiful, joy filled face at the cross of Christ I know and despite everything I go through and everything you go through and everything we go through and everything we are I am convinced that the love of God is as boundless as the seas were it to overflow into the expanses of all of creation's boundaries. Were the water to rush like waves. Were we the innumerable grains of sand carried in its storm towards its timelessness, held in a sovereign hand, eternity would be the first to sing that it was not enough. And it would spill forth into another in an effort to contain such a love. I am convinced that the grace of God is as incomprehensible as the space that the seas of love would spill into as they pour forth and cover all our shape. Would all eternity be swayed? Were we the innumerable stars in the sky swept away into a righteousness, clearly seen by redeeming eyes? Eternity would be the first to sing that it was out of place were it to be supposed that it should be sufficient to contain such a grace. And I am convinced that the joy of God is as insurmountable as the heights of which the oceans of love and grace are subject to spill over into life. We're all of hell to bear its swords. Were we the innumerable elect led into war behind a white horse, a king that defeated sin and death, eternity would be the first to sing that it could not possibly employ a volume or song sufficient enough to describe such a joy. At the cross of Christ, I know. Thank you guys so very much. <laughs>